The rain became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder now and then. The skies had turned dark, though I couldn't see any of it under the black umbrella. Not that I was looking up. In fact, looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping around me. All I could see was the damp grass under my feet. Only the monotone eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. Yeah, somebody's dead. It was only when the speeches ended that I finally was able to raise my head. A small gathering of people, mostly native relatives that I didn't even know were related to me, were huddled around a simple, small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sound of raindrops and umbrellas. If it weren't raining, everything would probably be in heavy silence. Appropriate funeral rain. I looked beside me where my father was standing, holding up a large black umbrella for our small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. Okay, is Harold... Harold, is that my grandpa? Yeah, okay. After all, etched into the smooth gray tombstone before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small. Only close family were allowed to come. Slowly, though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother, and me behind at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as father, grandfather's lawyer. Okay, this uh, repeating rain sound is getting a little annoying. I wish it could have been a little longer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud its contents. Wouldn't you do that somewhere other than the graveyard? And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last right will and there testament. at the grave? Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why- And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. Oh, shit. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house oh, shall shit. also be given to my granddaughter. What? He- I couldn't believe my ears. I had earned the family estate at 18? That was impossible, and yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Oh no, Dad's upset. Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? <laughs> no. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. Oh my god. Grandpa snubbed my dad for me. This is not gonna end well. Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Okay, this is okay. If I'm 18, and I inherit a fucking estate, I don't... The tax? Can you imagine the taxes on that? I know, okay, I'm taking this too seriously, but I am an adult, not a teenage, not a high school student, like this game is probably intended for, and I am just, like, thinking of all of the ways that this is, I can't live in this house, I would have to sell the house, I can't afford to maintain this house at 18. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Maybe don't. Honey, I would like what do you think? not to. Dot, dot, dot. I really wasn't sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think that I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some oh time God, to Dad. adjust. Calm the fuck down. David! Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go out ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. See, this is my mom's cool. Why did she marry the piece of shit? <laughs> she gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the funeral grounds, which was completely empty, save for the solemn-looking grave that was laid in front of me. 
I'm sure that if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they pass away? I don't even know if you can do that. I'm pretty sure you have to make, like, arrangements that might take several days. Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, yet the grave was a mere stone slab on the ground, void of any children's toys. My dad didn't even bother putting flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choked sob. You told me to stay strong, but right now I'm the farthest from it, like that one time a long time ago. Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I was swept into a giant bear hug, and we both laughed as he swung me around like an airplane. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy couldn't be here today. He said he wasn't feeling too good again. It had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time. And you're here, right? Mm, yeah. So what are we doing today, Grandpa? Mommy says there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we could go? Oh, I would love to. But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Oh, is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them, but I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Oh, of course. I love toys. Of course! He placed the toy in my hands with a smile, and I inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted, and obviously a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Hmm, I think the heart on its chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive, and it can be like a little nightlight before you sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea! I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. <laughs> well, I hope I can be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Hmm, well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. I'm still thinking about how I didn't get to see what Lizette looked like. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think of it in the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I think you fucked up in raising him, actually. I'm not so sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. He bent down to look at me at eye level with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. Okay, I need to stop for another, like, little addendum. I hate this particular... This particular, like, what do I call it? I don't like this attitude. If, if a child does not feel loved by their parents, you can't just say, oh, but they definitely love you and want what's best for you. No, if you're a parent, okay, I'm not a parent. So my, my, my input is probably limited, but I work with children. And if your child doesn't feel loved by you, that's your fault. <laughs> You need, if even if it's what's best for your child, you should talk to them, you know, directly and make them understand. Talk to them like a like a person. I I just I hate this. You you don't have to love your parents, okay? If there's anybody still watching this who shouldn't be, all of you sixteen and un, all of you sixteen and unders who shouldn't be watching this anymore, and anyone else who needs to hear it. You don't need to love your parents, and if your parents don't want to put the effort into showing you that they love you, th then that's on them. Okay, off my soapbox now. I don't hate Daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this, though, because he's an asshole. 
Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. It's but it's nothing excuse. that you should be concerned about. I had heard tidbits of this from my mother and various other people. The only people who had stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter, but it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard, though, trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Oh, thanks, Grandpa. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. Solidarity. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. Oh, he put, touched my heart. He pointed his finger to my head first and then pointed at my chest. So stay strong. Promise? I want to be clear that this is the first, like, this is our greeting. This is us greeting each other. We, I just walked in the door and we're having this heart to heart right here. For a moment, he looked almost sad, pleading. But as quickly as it had come, the expression disappeared from his face, and he was all smiles once again. Promise. Upon hearing that, Grandpa let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. All right, then. Enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? Mm. I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Okay, that's fine. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen. Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> All right, where are the boys? If I have to romance an anime boy, please show them to me. Okay, actually, I'm not going to pretend that I don't want to romance an anime boy. I do want to romance an anime boy. I want you to show me the anime boys. You willed me the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I'd be ready to take it? Especially after this. A surge of anger bubbled within me, but I quickly swallowed it. There was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry. It's hard to stay calm when you've left me with so many questions. Especially about what happened between you and Dad. Huh, what am I doing? Talking to a grave. My vision blurred and suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I... I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave you, even if the world might be turned against me. I left the grave, wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see. Say it's well, the rain. it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite oh, lasagna sorry. when we get home, okay? I want some lasagna. Thanks, Mom. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Oh my god, someone has died. Gathering my courage, I decided then it was time to talk. Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? Fuck no. Dot, dot, dot. Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. Are you going to help me pay my taxes on this estate? But it's so sudden. You just decided so quickly right after the funeral. Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. Fuck you, sir. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, my father rubbed his temples and sighed quietly. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors. So you will be guaranteed a spot. Nepotism. That is what we talked about before, yes? Nepotism. But what if... Stop mumbling. But what if I don't want to work there? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. I hope the vice chairman is one of the guys that I... I hope he's a cute anime boy. That I can... <laughs> dot, dot, dot. He came closer to me and his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, 
but you will appreciate it later. Shut up. For some reason, when I heard him say that, something snapped in me. I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that Grandfather passed away? Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. I don't like your tone. It's like nothing even happened at all. Like you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. Oh, I'll raise my voice. I'll, ra I'll raise a finger. I'll raise a finger at you, sir. What did he ever do to you to deserve this? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and erupted in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> you sure place him upon a pedestal. Like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. No, I just think you're being childish. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grandfather dead? While everyone was grieving, were you holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Did you feel just a bit happier seeing him lie in the graveyard? Oh, holy shit, this is a lot. Oh, okay. A flash of rage crossed his face, and he whipped the back of his hand across my cheek. Okay. If there's any parents out in the audience... This is what you don't do. I don't care how much your child yells at you. You don't. Don't hit them. Don't hit children. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on. When you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! Oh my god. What the fuck? I mean, I don't know anything because you won't talk about it like a little bitch. You did not know my father! You did not know what he was capable of. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that Grandpa actually was a shitbag. But that doesn't give you the right to be a shitbag. Dot, dot, dot. Is everything alright? What happened? No, nothing's alright. Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! Bye, bitch. I quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short pants, and for a while I just leaned against the door to my bedroom, eventually sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks still throbbed, and I tentatively looked up, stood up and looked at the mirror to see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't bruise. <laughs> what am I saying? Tears formed in the corners of my eyes, but I blinked them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for the second time today. I had to be stronger than that. Are you all right? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. Why did you marry him? I'm fine. I just lost my appetite. The lasagna's done, though. And I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? God, I want some lasagna. Yeah, don't worry about me, Mom. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. No, I'm not. I, I just don't want to eat right now. Please, dear. Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. I'm upset because my grandpa's fucking dead. Dot, dot, dot. I wanted to tell her. A part of me was screaming to tell her what dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. All right, get in my soapbox again. If somebody in your family hits you, like, with intent to harm you, or like, in anger, don't hide it. If, if you can trust somebody else in your family please say something say tell them don't have to deal with it by yourself I'm getting off my soapbox again i'm so tired why am i still up it's a 1 30 in the morning i remained silent letting the event remain in the past well i'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later i want to eat it some fucking lasagna finally my mom left me alone it was strange to think she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. Yeah, that's that's how doors work. I really don't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything to get my mind off of what off of what had just happened. Anything would be better than thinking any more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. I was going to move in my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I would be prepared for tomorrow. Wow, that is fast as fuck. Yeah, that was a good idea. I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaging around for a while before I finally found two large bags. Pulling them around the floor of my room, I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so I could bring all my things with me. You're fitting a lot more than just two bags. 
I didn't have much to bring other than just clothes and some toiletries. It's kind of bizarre that I didn't have any personal belongings. What the fuck are the books in the... What the fuck are the books in the back then? What are those? What are those? <laughs> it wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I would miss if I just suddenly left the house. Cannot relate. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. If it were going to be my new home, it would have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it a home. Just as I was packing my things, my cell phone began ringing and vibrating in my pocket. I slid my phone in my pocket and answered it while slowly easing myself onto my bed. Who could possibly be calling? Hey Anderson, you there? Suzu. Is everything alright? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Oh my god, I haven't even- this all- I, did I just- I- did I- I le left school, found out my grandpa was dead, we immediately buried him, and tomorrow I'm moving into another house. Is this house within, like, range of my high school? I am so confused. I know this is a visual, no, I'm stop taking it seriously. Hello? I'm really glad you guys called. My voice managed to come out, though it was only a whisper. What happened? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. Well... I slowly began to tell them about the funeral that afternoon. A small silence followed when I was done recounting what happened, and to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. Do you want us to come over right now? No, it's okay. My dad isn't in a good mood, so could we just keep talking on the phone like this? Of course! We stay on the phone until the crack of dawn. Right, Suzu? Yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? I would like the story to turn into me moving into this mansion with my two best friends. Um, and now it's a roommate scenario. <laughs> yeah. Triple threat trio? That sounds like the name of a gang. We are a gang. Yeah, I mean, we're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. Where are the boys? What's I want to see the anime thing? boys. You've got to step up I don't even know what they Naomi. look like. Falling behind is the cool kids like Anderson and me. <laughs> hey! I'm a cool kid! If anything, I say you have to step up your game! We chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. Very soon I had forgotten about the events that day and was engaged in a conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show. Some program called Herlock. What the fuck is Herlock? Is it, is it the, the feminist version of Sherlock? We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about him with that long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. Who is he? We had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> yeah, he has really high cheekbones, and his eyes are pretty, though I do have to say I prefer Jatson. As a bonus actor, it's just so sassy. Jatson. Jatson. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose my mind. I should I should probably find a place to stop, wrap this up, but I want to get to the boys. I want to see the anime boys. Please show me the anime boys. Oh my god. Am I recording? Okay, thank god. I looked at the clock hanging on the wall and realized how late it was. Whoa, it's already 1am? Sorry for keeping you guys so late. <laughs> Weak. It's 1.30 in the morning for me. <laughs> I think I'm going to hit the hay for tonight. See you guys at school tomorrow. I should probably shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just to talk to my friends. But it was really nice. Yes, when you are feeling low, definitely go... Find some friends to talk to. It helps a shit ton. Well, to the bathroom I go. Oh my god, do we need to explain every little bit of this? Oh, this is it's not a bad game, and maybe it's just I'm not used to playing visual novels. I think I've played like maybe two visual novels, and one of those was Doki Doki Literature Club, so that one doesn't even count. Um, but this is very slow, and I would like to get to the point where I get to like make decisions and maybe like or I would like to I'd like to meet one cute anime boy before I sign off for the night. Please show me the anime boys. 
I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beat the hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, I promptly dressed my pajamas and crawled into bed. Ah, a nice hot shower after a long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had been a really long day. I knew that I was wishing for something to change back in class, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Ugh. Don't even t you don't even want to take one day off for like grief. Curled up on my side and tightly wrapped the blankets around me. I really wasn't in the mood to be returning to school, but my dad probably would just make me go for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out to the lamp on my nightstand to turn off the lights. However, my mind was so lost in the passing of my grandfather and the thought of inheriting something so big that it haunted my mind the entire night until the next morning.